This is the day that our Lord has made, and we ask that you all who are faithful come rejoicing and victorious with us. Come let us embrace the mystery and the spirit of life as we celebrate the goodness of Kwanzaa and the African-American heritage. Gracious God, we come before you today. God, we give you thanks as a people on a journey in the struggle for freedom and justice that you're with us. God, we ask that you continue to be with us. Be with us in this service for all who are streaming as we gather tonight. Amen and thank you. What we're doing today is just giving you a glimpse of Kwanzaa. We have some phenomenal ministers that will preach and, and say a word to you about each principle. They're called the Nguza Saba principles. Nguza Saba tells you that there are seven principles. And you might ask, where did this all come about? Well, Dr. Karinga in 1966 sat down and thought that it would be best that we talk about a harvest a harvest of the will of the people, the will of the black people, African-Americans. And the language that we're using is um, Swahili, Ki Swahili. So when we speak Ki Swahili, we're acknowledging our African heritage. And then we, it's coupled with our understanding of our position in the United States as African-Americans. So, with the seven principles, the first thing we do is Habari Ghani, what's the news? And then we'll say Umoja, unity. So this is a time where we unite, we come together. Many ask the question, is this a religious holiday? No, it's not. This holiday starts on the 26th of December, after Christmas. It is something to acknowledge seven days of self-determination, creativity, um, purpose, faith, unity, and economic uh, growth and spending money with one another. It is a time in which African Americans can come together and celebrate who we are and whose we are. The wonderful thing about Kwanzaa is that during this time of social distancing, and a time that in which we are faced with a moment where we have to sit with our thoughts, we can reflect on each principle and how it has helped us stay strong during a time of this period that we call a pandemic. Brothers and sisters, I offer you an opportunity to dig a little deeper into what Kwanzaa is all about, not for me to just spoon feed you, but for you to eat from a table that you prepare for yourself. So I offer you an opportunity to look up Kwanzaa, the seven principles, the Nguza Saba, and how they fit in your life and how they have shown resilience in this time. So I say to you, enjoy each day and let's start with Umoja, uniting under Kwanzaa. Amen. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. i 
the United Church of Christ, we haven't stopped lifting up Christ, engaging our community, and celebrating our culture, even in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Each month, we have fed our neighbors through food share and special food giveaways in partnership with the Greater Chicago Food Depository. We partnered with the Howard Brown Health Center, Advocate Healthcare Center, and Imani Village to provide over 22,000 COVID-19 vaccinations. We provided over $100,000 in scholarships to Trinity members who are pursuing higher education goals. And our membership and viewership has continued to grow both physically and virtually worldwide. We haven't stopped because of God's grace. We haven't stopped because of your generosity. And today, you can help us continue to give God the glory and support the powerful ministry of Trinity United Church of Christ by sharing your tithes and offerings through Access ACS, Secure Give, Text to Give, First Fruits, U.S. Mail, or drop your offerings off at Trinity, the greatest church this side of the Jordan. Abaragani. Abaragani. Malachi 3.10 says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that, that there is meat in my house. That is a scriptural concept where God is calling the people of God to bring their material and intellectual resources to the house of God so that the entire community may be served. In the same way, in this existential moment, we are asked to consider our capacities to use our resources for the building up of our communities. Ujamaa, Ujamaa Cooperative Economics emphasizes our collective economic strength and encourages us to meet and meet our common needs through mutual support. 
Ujamaa's one of the most powerful concepts or con principles of Kwanzaa. It focuses on cooperative economics, which means coming together to build and maintain our stores and shops and businesses and control our own economic base. Ujamaa is not a new concept. It has its historical roots in Africa. It is a Swahili word, which means familyhood. And we know what Ujamaa looks like. According to Jessica Nimrod, from the moment our ancestors were brought to the Americas from Africa, they used some form of cooperative economics as a matter of practical survival. Enslaved and free Africans engaged in various forms of Ujamaa. Africans pooled their resources together to eat, creating substance and variety in their meals by sharing with one another. While in bondage, using the principle of Ujamaa, our ancestors would pool their money together to buy the freedom of certain individuals where it was possible using the principle of Ujamaa. Some might argue that to a large extent, the Underground Railroad was run by the principle of Ujamaa. The Free African Society, the forerunner of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, assisted newly freed Africans in their physical and financial and healthcare needs using the principle of Ujamaa. The concept of Ujamaa is nothing new. As early as 1888, black owned financial institutions initiated by churches and fraternal, fraternal organizations and groups of community leaders were formed. They formed and used their capital, the Capital Savings Bank in Washington, DC, the Truth Reformers Savings Bank in Richmond, Virginia, in 1988 were formed using the principles of Ujamaa, North Carolina Mutual Insurance Company, Atlanta Life Insurance Company, and National Benefit Life Insurance Company were formed under the concept and principle of Ujamaa, just to name a few. The concept of Ujamaa was, uh, was practiced throughout our history. Marcus Garvey and the U Universal Negro Improvement Association, the largest secular organization in African American history, was involved in all types of businesses and business ventures and employed people using the principle of Ujamaa. It was the principle of Ujamaa that was used throughout the civil rights movement. There were many efforts and many movements utilizing the principle of Ujamaa. Some of us don't have to go that far to find a real lived experience of Ujamaa. Some of us live in, 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 in households or blocks where the principle of Ujamaa was practiced routinely. On my block, my mother practiced the principle of Ujamaa. If the houses and the Jones and the Bryants had sugar, then we had sugar. If we had sugar, then the houses and the Jones and the Bryants had sugar. And that's how it worked. The principle of Ujamaa is not a foreign concept to black people. And when you look back over our history and look at the facts, the reality of our current situation, it should make you think. It seems as though our financial situation does not match our social condition. In an article in the Atlanta Black Star about, written in about 2016, it cited a Nielsen report and that raised this question. It said, black buying power has reached the tipping point, but how will black America leverage it to create wealth? The article went on to say, that the estimated black pine power in 2016 reached $1.2 trillion. However, a more recent Nielsen report indicates that the black buying power continued to grow. It grew from $230 million in the year, 2000, in the year 1990 to $1.3 trillion in 2018. Between the years of 2000 and 2018, our buying power rose 140%, while the buying power, power of white Americans rose 89%. Now that doesn't address the inequities that already exist, but it does show our buying power and what it is that we already have in our hands. Black folks are struggling with the lack of jobs and in, in our own communities even though we have this kind of buying power. For all of the wealth, we don't feel wealthy because we are sending all of our money outside the black community. In another study, it is noted that the dollar circulates 28 days in the Asian community, 19 days 
in the Jewish community and 17 days in the white community. Yet in the black community, it is believed that the dollar circulates six hours. As Dr. Boyce Watkins noted, we need to use the resources we have to harness that wealth that we have. He said that with $1 trillion, one can buy 1,000 NFL football teams, 3,000 predominantly white universities. The annual budget of 1.4 million charter schools throughout the nation, one can, buy, one can pay the tuition at a university like Howard for 50 million students for an entire year, or buy 854,000 community centers. One could buy NBC, ESPN, and CBS, and still have a billion dollars left over. It is true that African Americans have over $1 trillion in spending power, yet in our communities, our people are still living in poverty and lack. Because of these conditions and other elements, we have to be intentional. The principle of Kwanzaa may be the answer. Yes, the principle of Ujamaa is the answer to most of our problems. The scripture says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there is meat in my house. That is a form of Ujamaa, the meat or the resources referred to here looks like food share right here at Trinity. Andaleo or building of senior citizens establishments, building youth programs and taking care of our own, creating job training, supporting black trades people. That's a form of Ujamaa. There were many efforts and many movements utilizing the principle of Ujamaa. African Americans understood that they had to be intentional in working together to deal with the challenges that we faced then. And we have to be intentional in dealing with the situations we find ourselves in now. There are some roadblocks and the roadblocks are intentional. There are some things that were done to limit us, to create negative narratives. And some of these things are done right now, but we have to be intentional knowing what is going on. We need not place our energy in ne on negative things, on negativity. Although we have to continue to fight politically, we need to place our focus and our energy on what God has already done, on what God has given us to work with right now. So my brothers and sisters, I encourage us, I encourage us, I encourage us on this moment in the year 2021 to make a new commitment. Let's put the principles of Ujamaa into place by joining together and creating avenues to invest in our own communities. Let us, let us be the infamous them right now. Let us be them. Let us pull together and invest in our institutions that already exist, like the NAACP, PUSH, the Urban League, the Black, Black Matter Lives, the Black Star Project, Paving the Way, RNCO, or wherever positive work in the community is being done and let us be creative and think outside the box and create other avenues to bridge gaps in our own communities. There's no better time than now. As we face what seems to be a challenging moment, the good news is that we have everything we need right now. So let us pull together and internalize and put into practice the principle of Ujamaa, Habaragani.